Zach Sang Show. We got Heather. Hi. We got Dan. Hey. And we got Devin Druid from Woo! 13 Reasons Why. Oh. He's a stalker. This guy. Stalker. Is that how you, is that really how we're gonna start this year? Well, that's what he is. Hey. Yes. Well, in that's, the show. That's the character. Yeah. That's <laughs> I think I think we gotta I think we gotta you know just pull those pieces apart a little bit. You know? <laughs> okay. I, I, how is life right now for you? Like, can you how just is, des- yeah like describe it for me because it, it, it's a phenom. This show is unlike anything else I've really seen in a while. Mm, that's a very existential question. How like, is life? Um. No, but I, I, but I was trying to make a joke, but I'm not funny. No. Um, so you really I, are it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no. like, so, it's just kidding. Yeah, no, um, it, it's it's really exciting. It's kind of overwhelming. Um, but I don't know. I think the, the show, It's a lot of people are talking about it, and most importantly, it seems to be helping a lot of people. I've seen so many comments online for people saying that it's like, inspired them to reach out for help or mm-hmm. it's or it's helped them to notice the signs and and to be more courteous to other human beings and willing to reach out and help somebody else which has been our goal from the beginning so it's it's kind of it's very heartwarming and it's very inspiring and kind of uplifting and just, so things things are going really well right now i mean beyond well seriously yeah. i mean are people are kids coming up to you everywhere you go yeah well i'm not everywhere i go but like i was just in new york city for for a quick audition and uh I get I got recognized by somebody as I was walking to my agent's office. I was in Penn Station getting a train back to the airport, and I got noticed by two other people that asked for pictures. The, when I was flying to New York, the lady next to me had just finished watching the show, <laughs> and she had a dog with her who was this a gorgeous Pomeranian chihuahua mix named Watson, and uh-huh. she let me pet him oh. on the plane wow. and hold him and snuggle with him. You're obviously special. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, do you, When you meet somebody like that and you're on a plane with them, mm-hmm. do you ask like what their thoughts are, not just on the show, but like what their thoughts are on Tyler Down? Because like he's a questionable character and there's sides to him, right? And people tend to take sides. And yeah. they have. I mean, I don't really... I don't really ask them specifically about the show. I just kind of let the conversation happen yeah just let it happen let it roll naturally a lot of them like ask you know they everybody wants to ask about a season two and i'm like i literally know nothing so i'm sorry <laughs> it's not even like a hush it's like i can't tell you yeah. thing. it's like <laughs> you don't know i don't know but um, the show is set up for a season two yeah i mean you could definitely say that there's storylines that could continue on especially with like tyler and alex and bryce and beyond story li- okay come on yeah. it's set up like let, let's talk about what your character does, right? Yeah, what what Tyler does. I mean, you is, have a, Tyler has a whole arsenal of weapons. Mm-hmm, he does. It's quite terrifying. Um, I I don't know. I think. Uh, where do you want to see it go? Where do I want to see it go? I think that in in the first season we've done such a good job of not only entertaining and making a quality show, uh-huh. but we've done a really great job of telling the story of a girl struggling with her mental illness and bullying and sexual assault and uh that's it's a really important story and a message that we've brought in our show where it's like real issues that people deal with and we're showing them authentically so that it can be talked about and hopefully progress and find a solution and i think that with the way that tyler's treated in the show he's obviously dealing with his own guilt and self-hatred and then he's also ostracized and bullied and kind of relentlessly tormented by other kids in the school even the whole message of Hannah's tapes is to stop that mm-hmm. it's like they're, they're they're still continuing so I think there's a further conversation still that could but, be had about mental illness with Tyler and then even further you could talk about gun safety and gun violence of course and, you know with staying with the theme of the show it's all about kind of like educating people and telling an important message in a way that's grounded in and makes people empathetic because they've felt those things or they've yeah. seen these things happen in their real life so I think that We've set the show up so that if we wanted to continue, we could do it with that same important message as yeah. opposed to just like, oh, we're going to make a second season because the first one was successful. It's got to <laughs> continue with the same message and, and, you know, these important stories and conversations to be told and, you know, educating people about all these important things. So, yeah. Was that Hannah's intention in those tapes to stop this from happening again? Because if you look at like, I mean, people are throwing rocks through your window. Yeah. Tyler's window, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's... It's it's a really good question. I mean, I think you know she's she's a high school girl. You know, she, she nobody no high school kid fully knows everything that they're feeling, much less knows how to talk about it. Ever so, it's I mean, 
when you're pushed so far and you feel so lonely and so hopeless and, and you're pushed to that point that Hannah's in, I don't think that she was capable of thinking any further than she was in that moment. Yeah. Which is like, I need to tell my story of why this happened to me. In her head, that I bet I, I mean, that's what I'm assuming that's all she was thinking in that moment. She couldn't she couldn't think about what would happen to these characters afterwards or that they would turn on each other. You know, I think she was incapable of that. I mean, and that's the other thing, you know, these characters are real, they're real people. They're real kids struggling with different things. They're not perfect. Hannah certainly wasn't perfect. Clay wasn't perfect. Um, and that's authentic. That's true to reality. What, what were your thoughts the first time you read the, when you touched the pilot? When right? I touched the pilot? Oh, man. So when I first, when I first got the audition, I was auditioning for Clay. And so I was given this email breakdown, which is like they, they list all of the talent attached from like producers and writers and directors, et cetera. And then there's like a quick, like small paragraph breakdown of the characters of Clay and Hannah. Um, this is really cool, by the way. I just wanted to point out um, that it was just like the casting process was so insane because they were auditioning so many people. And I thought it was really cool that in the breakdown for Clay and Hannah, they were like, specifically stating you know any ethnicity which i thought was really cool yeah um and and i think that you can also see that in in the show is like we have such a diverse cast not just oh. about ethnicity but also like sexual orientation and representing if got all to expect, walks of life exactly i mean if, if you're if you're representing a real high school of like hundreds of kids they're not all going to be a cookie cutter same but, person you but, have to represent mm-hmm. the world and and all of the amazing different walks of people that make up the world and that represent it that's um, it. Yeah. So uh, so I thought that was really cool. And then uh, just reading the pilot, like, the writing is just so amazing. I mean, you have Brian Yorkie show running and writing for the show and executive producing. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning, Tony Award winning writer. And so, like, the, the talent really shines through these scripts. So immediately, like, I was already on board when I saw the talent that was attached with Selena Gomez and Oscar winning director Tom McCarthy and anonymous content who has been putting out amazing shows like Mr. Robot for a long time man so many things so I was already like on board and after reading that script I was like I have to be a part of this no matter what I have to be a part of it somehow so well okay but I mean do you when you read it do you know it's a hit like when when they hand you the first script like what what do you think of Tyler what how do you analyze the character well I because like I said I was only given the the first episode and Tyler originally was not in it at all they wrote me in like I have a very small introduction scene in the bathroom and then you see me at Kat's party yeah. but I was written into that like last second because they wanted to introduce my character since they knew where it was going to be going they wanted to introduce him earlier on um, so I didn't know anything about Tyler until I was given the audition for Tyler where they gave me one scene for the audition which was the dark scene with Clay and I thought that it was a really powerful moment and like like you said, you know, uh, if did I know it was going to be a hit? I don't think you can ever know. No, you can have like a gut feeling. But I've I've read sensational scripts, and then I've seen them be produced and seen the final product, and it didn't live up to what it was. And that happens, you know. You never know how something's going to translate properly. Um, but I I I knew that the source material was great. I knew that I knew great things about the book. The pilot was amazing, and I saw the caliber of talent going into it. And then once I was cast in the project, and I actually got to meet everybody, and see their love and passion for it, and see all of that shine through in their work, was just like it was amazing, and it gave me an amazing abundance of confidence in those people that I knew that they were not going to let us down. And, and they're really, I mean, the cast is all-star. Like, incredible. Like, it, it, amazing talent. Yes. And I think it's setting up, like, a next generation of superstars. Truly. Like, I think that, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think they all certainly deserve it. Um, I mean, for a lot of people, this is their first project. Yeah. Catherine Langford, Hannah Baker, this is their <laughs> first. Which is crazy. Which is ridiculous. You'd never know it. And it was amazing because she's like... I remember my mom was telling me something that her dad said to her about just everything that Catherine has done, I guess, has, like, she's just had this discipline about her. Like, she used to swim competitively, and so she'd get up early and, and just train really hard, and that translates to, to whatever she's doing, she whether it's do the best. her music, you know, like, she's, she taught herself how to play the piano in, like, a week or something like that. <laughs> wow. She's She was staying home and working on scripts as well as socializing with us. But, you know, she had her priorities in order and was like, 
w- always working really hard and she's from Australia so she was always like using her American accent when we were hanging out so that she could stay into it um, you know on and off set she was just like amazing and other so many other talents Brandon Flynn and Michelle Ang and Christian Navarro and so many people who this is their first project and you never would have guessed ne- never no. seriously and that's really like I think a lot of that obviously they're all super talented human beings but I think that they were all I think we all understood how important the story was and that motivated us that much more to do it justice and portray it as accurately as possible and to be as authentic. What is it like in between takes? Do you guys break character when they stop rolling? Are you guys staying in character? Like, can you just describe that atmosphere? I think, um, because their show certainly has lots of dark themes and, and if you stay in that for too long, it can stay with you and that can be a really dangerous and scary thing and you go home and, and you, you're still stuck in it and you just find yourself crying every couple of minutes because you're feeling so much. So uh, it was really important for us, I think, to, to try and stay loose in between takes and, and take a step back and live in the moment and be friends and understand that, you know, we are actors doing something and it is important, but we can't bring that with us yeah. afterwards because that's just, it's too much. Were there really therapy dogs on set? Yeah. Yeah, there were therapy dogs. Uh, Like Alicia said, there was... um, Our producers brought in lots of counselors and gave us so many phone numbers of people that we could talk to if we didn't feel like we could talk with each other with the producers. And they really went above and beyond to make sure that we were all comfortable and in a safe environment, Um, especially for Justin Prentice and Alicia and Catherine who had to do such dark and incredibly brutal and tragic scenes together um and again i think that's where you know like i said you have to joke in between takes when you have Mm -hmm. two people doing something that's just so gut-wrenching and so hard to do you have to make sure that those people are supportive of each other and and are in a place where they are comfortable with each other so that they can do this horrible thing together and then come out of it and be like are you okay yeah everything's good we're friends this is fine but but that's also like a hard thing to do right because everybody's actors everybody has their own method mm-hmm. right everybody has their own system have how to get it done and yeah you never be you never want to be that, that first guy who cracks a joke after a really intense scene you know yeah. maybe you break it for somebody else you know i don't know what, what yeah i don't know if that i don't i don't think anybody was ever really feeling that way like it, it i mean certainly after some things were difficult i remember after table reads certain table reads when everybody's you know sitting there with tears coming down their face at the table reads and we just all get up and do a, group, a big group hug and and just you know we just talk together and i remember there was something that happened with me that i was like just really down about a certain day and brandon flynn called me and make sure that i was doing okay and was just there for me and it's the same for all of the cast everybody was always so supportive of each other and i think that's really what you needed you know you had to you had to to lighten things up a little bit um and just stay comfortable and and it was also knowing how important this was that again yeah motivated us to to go all in um but then you know you have to keep your humanity a little bit did you ever question how intense it was right like the intensity of the show because there's a lot of people coming out now right saying that like with it it did a lot of good right Mm -hmm. but there's also moments where you know some experts are questioning it it's too real yeah 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 um and I mean, I, you know, total, people are definitely entitled to, you know, their opinions and their beliefs or whatever, especially, you know, experts. But um, you also, you know, we worked very closely with suicide therapist experts. You watch our after show yeah. beyond the reasons why we have our counselors come on and talk about the show and the work that they did. Dr. Ronna Hugh, uh, we had an extensive meeting with her about, uh, you know, making sure that we weren't romanticizing or glorifying any bit of it. Um, and so you're kind of stuck in 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 between two different areas where on one hand you can't glorify it or or romanticize anything because you don't i mean it's it's a tragic thing there's nothing beautiful or blissful about it and so you have to show how painful this is and and that that just goes to show what you see hannah's face you know the amount of agony and pain that she's in and how horrifying and gut-wrenching this moment is and so then you have to think she thinks that what she's going through in that moment is better than her life tomorrow. So the amount of pain that that poor girl was going into or that she was feeling was so much that it made that horrific act seem worth it to her. And so you have to show that and then you also have to, 
I mean, there there's no way so, of dressing it up. Like, you, well, there, no, there's but, no way it's not then, intense. Yeah, and you can't you can't censor it. You can't yeah. sugarcoat it because no. what good are you doing for the people who actually who, go, who through, go it. through this yeah. every day? You can't you know slap slap a filter over it and and you know make it seem easier than it is and then throw it out to the world and be like, here's an accurate representation of mental illness, self harm, and suicide because that is a slap in the face to people who struggle with it every day, and that is not authentic mm-hmm. it's not real and it doesn't do anything good for the world yeah no beautifully said beautifully oh, said I'm, I'm just very passionate about no, the this. show it's it's not beautiful. even just the show but, but the just whole... the issues at large you know i i it's you've been something that i've been very close to since i was a kid you know growing up as a, as a kid in public school you meet people who go through this all the time you meet kids that you know wear their hoodies and long sleeves all the time and you don't know what to do about it and so i think that we're in a position where we've been given a platform and that gives us a responsibility and an obligation to use that platform to speak out and to help people. And that's why we put so much thought and effort into this show, not just with the writing, but then with the after show and yeah. with the trigger warnings in front of episodes, because we know that this is important to people. We did it with the the website specifically for suicide hotlines and for crisis text lines. We were tr- doing our very best to be thoughtful and to put as much love and care to these people and give them all of the resources that they might need. And you guys have done it beautifully. Seriously, you. were really? you expecting all the criticism though? Like after putting all that effort into trying to like avoid it? Yeah, I think it's gonna happen no matter what. But I think that you can't really let it get to you. You have to, you know, just think of all the good that you're doing in the world. You know, people are gonna have opinions regardless, and that's totally fine. It's the human thing that happens. Um, but I think that there is much more good coming out of it uh, than, than bad. That. Yeah. What was the hardest scene for you to shoot? For me, uh, it was definitely the the dark room scene, just because I think that is my most emotionally intense scene. Because it's like, you know, everybody. Uh, I, I we referred to them on set as the tape kids. Those are the the kids <laughs> that are on the tapes, uh, and so that is how I continue to refer to these kids. Everybody is kind of trying to shake the blame off of themselves because they don't want to believe that they are this terrible person that had any part in this tragic thing happening. Um, and so other characters do this by saying, you know, oh, Hannah's lying, that didn't really happen, or by saying she's overdramatic, she's a drama queen, this happens to every girl at every other school and this doesn't happen, she was just a freak or whatever. Um, and so I think Tyler is one of those characters where he does try and shake the blame, but I think he's maybe one of the first ones, aside from Alex, who really starts to accept his position and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, his even in that moment with Clay's excuses, I didn't mean to. I loved her. I didn't mean to hurt her this way. Um, so you can see, and even when he's trying to explain himself away, he says, "I didn't mean to, but I did." You know, yeah. like he no, he, he knew what he was doing. To accept it. Yeah. So I think in that moment, he everything that he's kind of been trying to contain is suddenly burst open, and so he's all all of this guilt is kind of starting to weigh on him, uh, and in his head, he starts to accept responsibility for it. Um, although he he. Similarly to Clay, he turns to to anger as well to try and justify some things where, uh, for me, I feel like Tyler thinks, you know what, yeah, I did have a part in this horrible thing, and I regret it immensely, but maybe somebody else did something worse, and they're the ones that really deserve to to feel pain. And, and so I think that that helps translate a lot towards the end of the show. Yeah, and that's going to bring me to you know little fan conspiracies here. Mm, I mean, those you, are fun. What's your favorite? <laughs> Do you have one? Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite. There are just so many interesting ones, and they're all things that like I never thought about. I just read the words on the page and and got direction from the directors and and you know portrayed everything. Like I said, um, I know that there's a theory that uh, Tyler shot Alex yeah. instead of Alex shooting himself well, um there's a couple yeah but but what i thought was so interesting about that is you know i never even thought about that you know it's in the show in the script it's just written you know uh principal boland says you know alex dandel shot himself in the head that's written in the show and there isn't any like in parentheses it's like tyler really shot Alex. <laughs> that's not a yeah. thing it just shows you know tyler shows guns and then pulls picture down and then there's the flashback it doesn't there's no so I guess that could be expanded on if there is something in the works that Brian Yorkie hasn't told me about that, you know, that that maybe the theory is true. Um, 
I, I don't know. Well, I, anything could really happen, right? Like, a yeah. lot of people online were talking about, you know, the 10th anniversary of the book, right? Mm-hmm. When it came out, the guy, like, he pretty much said that, like, you know, he would do—the the ending was different. Hannah didn't die, right? Yeah, in Jay Asher's original conception of the book, in the original ending, Hannah Baker didn't die. Yeah. And I guess in the 10th anniversary edition of the book that released— it's it's the the original book with the original ending, mm-hmm. but then at the end there's like a bonus what if chapter, yeah, which is like you just substitute that in and it's her actually alive, which I still haven't read yet. Um, but I I think um, I don't know if it would have had the same amount of. I don't think it would have s- sent the same message if it was just like ta da she's actually alive haha yeah. tricked you guys it wouldn't <laughs> have done the same amount of. Uh, it just, it, it just wouldn't have been the same, and it wouldn't have had the same message along with it. And I don't think it would have helped as much. So do you think Alex Standle shot himself? Do I th- I don't know anything. Um, do I think? I think that there are so many possibilities. I can't comment on, like, anything because I, like, I, I, ha- I still haven't seen the show. Yeah. By the way, wait, 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 hold, hold on, hold yeah. on, hold on. Well, okay, is so that like strategic? Let's get into that. Okay, so I don't like to watch myself, uh, first of all, and then also I'm so close with my castmates that it hurts me physically to see them in so much pain on screen. So I can't bring myself to watch them doing some of these horrific things. Um, I've I've seen the first two episodes, everything through it, and then I've skimmed through each episode. And I've kind of like scrubbed through it on the Netflix video player <laughs> and I've watched specific scenes through just to see how they played out. Okay. But like I can't, I still can't watch the scenes with like Bryce and Jessica or Bryce and Hannah or uh, Hannah and Mrs. Baker. I just, I can't. It's, it hurts me too much to like see my friends. And, and I think that goes to so, like they're just such great actors and I know that they're real people that I like. Yeah, Justin yeah. the other day I was at his house. I know he's fine. <laughs> I know Catherine's fine. I yeah. just saw her. I just texted her. Everybody's fine but it's just like I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I, I just care about them so much that it's it's a little difficult. Why don't you watch yourself? Uh, I guess the whole time because you know we shot the show over the summer I've had you know six months of growth as a human and as an actor since then So I guess the whole time I'm just nitpicking myself and being like oh I could have done this better if we did it now Yeah, or Mm -hmm. or something or a lot of the times I'll be like oh why they use this take I I specifically remember another take where it felt better uh, for me Um, So it's just a lot of the time. I just I can't really unbiasedly watch it without just nitpicking my performance and just thinking on the next one and, and thinking what I can do better in the future. Has the rest of the cast avoided watching it, or is it just you? Uh, I don't know. I can't speak for them, uh, but I, I think I think a lot of them... I don't even know if it's a lot of... I know that some have watched it. I don't know about others I haven't asked, but um, I don't know. What, what were the friend groups like? Because, I mean, you guys are all, like, in your 20s, you know? So good. Was there uh, I'm, separate, not, I'm the youngest in the cast. What, how old are you? I'm 19. I just turned 19 in January, so I was 18 when we were shooting the show. You can't Um, even drink. No, I don't. I don't really want to. (laughs) Fair enough. um, Good, good. But it's uh, no, we're we all we're really like the best of friends. We're this big happy family, and it's like, I every cast probably says that for every show or movie or whatever. But I'm I I mean it so much. Like I said, I love these people so very much. I remember when I first landed. They flew me in for a dinner before they started shooting the first episodes. It was like a week before they were going to start shooting. Um, and again, I wasn't in the first two episodes, so I was only going to fly into uh, the Bay Area where we were shooting for three days just to get dinner and just to meet people and do yeah. a quick wardrobe fitting and then go back where I'd stay at home for another month uh, until it was time for me to come out. And so then I landed, and uh, well, the second I, I landed, I checked my email, and they were like, hey, we're writing you into episode one, so you're going to stay for an extra couple weeks. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, I have, like, three pairs of clothes. Um, <laughs> I'll do some laundry. Thanks for um, the heads up. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but uh, And then Diana Sun, who was our, like, producer and writer on the show, she put us all in uh, in, in this email thread together so that we would all just have each other to talk to and so everybody was like hey what's up here's my number i'll be here uh and so i I, as soon as i landed i was like hey guys just landed here's my number and like by the time i was in my hotel room justin prentice was like hey man i play bryce uh i'm in the i'm in the lobby with tom mccarthy if you want to come hang out and i was like yeah dude sure so i immediately went out and justin and i like immediately hit things off and we went into like this courtyard area of the hotel where there was like 
fire pits and the pool and then a ping pong tables we just sat out there playing ping pong all night and then like one by one other cast members would just fill Love in it. and we just all hang out all night That's and just awesome. talk and uh i remember it was really cool because i'm like i'm not the most experienced actor on this show but i remember like christian came in and alicia came in and I think Brandon came in, and they were all like, oh, you were on Louie. I loved that episode. And I was like, these people know me. <laughs> what? You played young Louie. I did, yeah. But I, th- but I thought that was the coolest thing because I was like, I don't know. Like, I was just That's talking awesome. with Alicia the other day, and when I, because I, I saw her again after watching certain scenes of the show, and I was like, you're so good. You are, like, you're so incredibly talented and you're so good in this show and she was like you know i was like a fan of yours before i met you so that's like and i was like what <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> this is I good v- that was cool but good like group of people a really great group of people and again i think again the importance of the show on all of us it really again motivate it motivates us to to put so much more into it than, than maybe you usually would because it's so important to everybody and I think that also like helped us to just stay on this level of what we're doing is important and and we got to be there for each other and so I guess like I don't know we it's just an amazing group of people the most like loving and caring and thoughtful and supportive human beings who also just happen to be the most talented kids I've ever had the privilege of working alongside for such a long period of time because that's the other thing you know we worked together for six months you get to know each other like not only that like a bunch of them were all in the same apartment complex oh, for on. all those six months it's, so it's like what are you, you you're gonna live alongside and work alongside people every every week for the next six months and and not hang yeah not, not hang. bond well and like if we if we hated each other, that would have been torture. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. On top of the heavy, you know, yeah. acting yeah, absolutely. stuff. Like, but everybody what? got along so well, and we hung out all yeah. the time. And it was like Christian's birthday happened while we were on set. So I I came to set because I wasn't working this day. He was working on his birthday. So I came to set, and one of our PAs, Lauren, was just keeping watch for him. And so my mom, my sister, and I just filled his trailer with balloons. We had the whole cast and crew sign a birthday card for him. Oh, that's awesome. And so it was it was amazing. And then we all that's went out cool. for Christian's birthday. We like went out for a big dinner and like booked a karaoke room. <laughs> and nice. uh we had this inside joke the whole time because if you Googled Christian Navarro before the show came out what com- who came up was like this like Brazilian model like with this like <laughs> luscious like Garnier fructis like s- flowing hair and this like great beard so we'd always joke we're like that's our Tony that's him <laughs> that's not funny. not this other Christian so my mom and I, my mom helped me make happy birthday Christian of our t-shirts with that other Christian's face on it. That's, <laughs> on these like super tacky fluorescent like safety vest yellow shirts. That's beautiful. Oh, that's so I've got like group pictures of all of us out at dinner with these shirts on with Christian. And he's just sitting there because Christian's always like super classy and stylish. He's just got this like super cool suit on and we're all in these tacky t-shirts. t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just like holding his up like, hey, I look good and you guys look like idiots. <laughs> um, it was awesome. amazing. We did like an escape the room challenge in in Chinatown and... I mean, bonding. Like, you guys are friends for life. We really are. You don't break this. We saw movies together all the time. Dylan Manette was, uh, I think he had to fly into L.A. for the premiere or for something for Don't Breathe. And so his his movie Don't Breathe came out. So we all went and we saw it together in IMAX to support Dylan and and just just hang out. And it was a great film and he was so great in it. Uh, And then, like, I'm a big comic book nerd, so I love all of the superhero movies when they come out. So we'd all go and we saw Doctor Strange together in IMAX 3D. Uh... When we got back here, a bunch of us went and saw Logan together. Cool. Uh, Wasn't was Logan great. awesome? It was so good. Oh, yeah. And, oh, my God, they were so good. How <laughs> hands-on was Selena? Was she a part of this, or did she kind of just stay on set, or did she, was she even not there that much? No, she was definitely – she was more behind the scenes with it, but she definitely had her – she had her hands, you know, in, in the pot and was definitely – making sure that everything ran smooth. I mean, you got to remember, you've heard the story so many times. She, Her mom bought her the book when she was 16. They bought the rights to the book, and they've groomed it into this over all these years through initial, you know, two-and-a-half-hour two movie concepts with her as the lead mm-hmm. to now a 13-episode Netflix series. And so you have to think, you know, she was a 16-year-old girl, her and her mom, and and then it became more than just them. We have, like, so many amazing producers and people on on the show, bringing in Brian Yorkie and bringing in other amazing 
producers Crystal Lablin and Joy Gorman Weddles and Steve Golan, and then bringing in Anonymous Content and Paramount Productions and all of the amazing people that work with there. It all started with Jay, Mandy, and Selena. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that they had the insight and the intelligence and the patience to wait and bring up on the right people who got the project That's it. instead of just rushing to get it out mm-hmm. because she wanted to star in it. Like that shows a true passion for the project, first of all, but then also just shows like a genius in in film production to, to, to just nurture it for this long and make sure that the right people came along to build it what it was. And then it was just this amazing group effort of, again, you know, Joy Gorman Weddles and Crystal Lablin and Selena and Mandy and Brian Yorkie and Tom McCarthy and Steve Golan and Anonymous Content and Paramount and this amazing collaborative effort between so many talented and passionate human beings that helped to make it what it was. Every little piece matters, right? Absolutely. Like, every little piece. Absolutely. Were you part of the crew that got a tattoo? I was not, no. Why not? I am, uh, I'm still naked skinned. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> tattoos. Um, we talked about Christian wanted to get uh, 13 Reasons Why tattoos for his birthday. And so we were all going to do it. Uh, but then Dylan w- wouldn't do it. So he was like, <laughs> we were like, no. Uh, where was it? Where um, were they going to go? Where was the discussion of where these tattoos would be? I don't even think we had a discussion about what the tattoo would be. I think Christian like initially initially wanted like the number thirteen or something, yeah. um, and I I was, used to do uh, graphic design, so I came up with this like little logo where it was like using the numbers one and a three and thirteen to spell the initials HB for Hannah Baker. Oh, cool. Um, so I still have that somewhere if I ever want to do something with that. But I think that the That's cool. It it is cool. But I think uh the semicolon project is just an amazing organization as well and it does so much to bring awareness to to the groups. And I first learned about that through um production had actually invited us to to all come to the production offices as a cast together and watch um audrey and daisy this amazing documentary on netflix um about real people that have gone through sexual assault and, and bullying and suicide it's a really great is, documentary it is a really great it's documentary. Eye-opening. i you highly learn a lot. Yeah. i highly recommend that's why i mean to go and watch it yeah. and urge people to go and see it because it's again just like this show does but it's real encounters and and real i guess recounting of of people that have actually gone through it and um it's just it's it's really because it's like it's real people and it's like very it's heartbreaking but then it's heartwarming and it kind of gives you a sense of hope for the future and and helps you to look out for the signs and it educates people again which is I think is really important. Um, what do you love about Tyler Down? What do I love about Tyler Down? Uh, it's a really great question. I think all of these characters are all they've done such a good job of making them three-dimensional human beings and giving them all motives and purpose and then thoughts about what they've done afterwards because like i've said before you know no human being is inherently evil and and no one does something with evil intention saying oh i'm i'm a bad person so i'm going to do this bad thing to this person everyone kind of justifies it to themselves sometime or, or somehow uh whether it's uh you know i acted in a fit of rage or it was you know, revenge or something, or I didn't mean for it to to come off as hurtful as it did. Um, And I think that we really did that well with Tyler. Um, You know, he's not just a bad person who did a horrible thing. He, similarly to like Zach and and Alex, you know, they were people who were just selfish and thought in the moment of nothing but themselves and ended up doing something that was bigger than they thought that it could have been. Mm -hmm. And I think Tyler's the same way. Um, and Tyler's also really interesting because, you know, he, he says that he fell in love with Hannah Baker. And even if that was more, you know, he's, he's a high school kid. What does he know about love for the first time? You know, it's his first time feeling this for this girl. And that's not to say that high schoolers can experience love at all. But it's this kid who is socially inexperienced, who's never felt yeah. this before. He doesn't know, again, he doesn't know what he's going through, much less how to identify what it is and how to deal with it. Um, so even if it is more obsessive, he just doesn't know what to do with it. And and he has been so picked on and so pushed away as this outcast that he doesn't feel like he is able as a human being to talk to this girl at all. He's, he feels like this is the only way that he can be close to her, her in any way. And so it's become this weird kind of like obsessive and precious thing to Tyler Um, and I don't think he ever imagined that it would be what it was and I don't think that he 
I mean, I, I believe that he knew what he was doing was bad, but I, I, I don't think he realized how bad. But n- nobody did. Nobody on those tapes did, right? And yeah. a lot, And that's the other thing, too, like, to be real with you, like, some of the things that happened in the relationships that played out on the show between, you know, the people on the tapes and Hannah, mm-hmm. it, you know, those things happen all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Those are, you know, whether it's like, you know, I mean, you can go through it, a couple of them. Obviously, you know, the rapes and stuff, like, mm-hmm. different in a class of their own. Yes. Right? But, like, those Moments can happen in a high school hallway all yeah. the time, and you don't even know. And the person doing it won't even realize. Ever. Yeah. Well, and I think that does a really good job of showing, you know, Hannah's experiences start off as, you know, something that anyone's been through, and yeah. some things that some people would write off. And that just goes to show. It tells this message about how all of these things, no matter how big or how small they are, so many different things piled up on top of someone will push them to their breaking point mm-hmm. and that not everybody handles things the same way just because someone online can you know take the cyberbullying and then just press a block button and get away with it that doesn't mean that every single human in the world feels that same way and can deal with it that way and Hannah Baker is is a prime example of that all of these little things and then these other big things piled onto this person just pushed her to this point and again you know she was you know, mentally ill and, and she was not a perfect person. And so some of these things, you know, just all piled on top of her. It's, it's, and it happens all the time. Yeah. And I think that's why it's very important for everybody to realize that what they say and what they do affects people. And it kind of, you know, reminds them and gives them this little like sticky note in the back of their head of what, what am I about to say? What am I about to do? Is it a big deal? Is it not? Even if it is, how could it affect this person? And so I think it's it's just helping people to be a little bit more conscious about what they do and what they say and how they treat people. You know, especially if you see somebody who already looks like they may be going through a rough time, you know, maybe maybe don't throw that little that little joke out there because even if it's just a joke to you, maybe to them they'll take it to heart and it and it'll be what pushes them yeah. to the next thing. Um, so instead of doing that, maybe you go over and you offer your support and your empathy and you talk and you you know the signs and you reach out for help. So what do, you, what do you think about the fans of your show pretty much bullying Zara Larson off Twitter for a night? What? Were you aware of that? I wasn't aware of anything. Oh, yeah. Zara Larson said she wasn't a huge fan of the show, so fans of the show just attacked her, and she went and deleted all of her tweets. Wow. Which kind of goes against what the show is telling you. Yeah, it does. Uh-huh. I think people... I mean, I, I have no control over that, and the show has no control over that, but I think that the people those people might want to go back and watch the show again because maybe they didn't absorb mm-hmm. the message behind it. Um, and that's, that's a horrible thing. And I, I had no idea. And I offer my support and, and, you know, kindness to, to this person. And I highly urge our fans to be more conscious about what you're doing and to take the lesson from the show and maybe start to be kinder humans. Um, Devin. Yeah. You're an incredible human being. I, this is a really- I, I would not say that, but I would well, also, I, I would say that I'm striving to be the best human I can. You're on your way, my which friend. Which is, I, I think it's all you can do. Um, That's it, really? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it really is. Get better. I mean, just, just don't be a terrible person. You know, just, just be, be nice kind. to everybody. Just be kind. Come on. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, yeah. just be that's empathetic. If you, yeah. if you can just like see what someone's going through, you can imagine how they might be feeling in that moment. And, you know, as an actor, that it helps me a lot. But as a human being, it helps even more where I can see, you know, you know, if somebody if somebody's sitting on the curb, you know, or something and they just look down and and if they just seem sad, you know, I don't even if I don't know what they're going through, I can I can say, oh, hey, that person looks upset. Are they OK? And then I can, you know, you think back into a moment in your life when you felt sad and you what did you need in that moment? You needed a, a hand. You needed a good hug. You needed somebody to talk to and somebody that you could reach out for. And now you can be that person because you you are an empathetic person. and You know, these signs now. Um, but I highly urge, you know, people, if you didn't get the message of the show, maybe watch it again. And maybe maybe you have some issues of your own that you need to that maybe you need to open up about. You know, there are great counselors and great people that you can talk to. Find someone trustworthy and someone that you love where you feel comfortable opening up and maybe that you'll discover something about yourself and maybe maybe tomorrow will be better for you this show changed your life forever do you it really has yeah absolutely and i think in ways that go beyond fame or money or other acting gigs i mean that's like that's secondary that's on the back burner absolutely yeah it's it's a message and a lesson that i'll carry with me forever i mean justin prentice and i we went to uh this party for uh this party it was like a celebration <laughs> for uh for um 
oh gosh, what was it? Uh, it was like the the early show uh, and them reaching like a million subscribers on Musical.ly. Cool. Uh, it was just a really cool. They invited me to come hang out and I, I hadn't met them yet and I thought it would be a really cool thing. And they had, um, these are called My Intent Bracelets. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the these people, they're like these little brass, you know, kind of like... I don't know, little loops Circles. of metal, yeah. and they they just like you know dent them and and uh, with with letters to get whatever you, you want written on them so that you can carry it with you. What's and on so it? Justin Prentice and I got matching ones that say compassion. Oh, cool. Um, because we didn't want something that was too on the nose, like yeah. strength or love or something, but also something that we felt was important that we should continue to bring with us. And so it's just it's a friendly little reminder that reminds us to be compassionate human beings and to be there for each other and support each other and and to. Be filled with love, even on your dark days. You know, if you if you're feeling upset or depressed or whatever, there are good things ahead. Not one more, one more thing. I hope oh. the Penguins lose. <laughs> oh, what are you a fan of? Flyers. You're a Flyers fan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll end it on that. That's no, no, you know what? Though? Way to kill the interview. Yeah, man. thanks, man. No, you know what though? I grew up a Penguins fan, but I've always been more of a hockey fan than I am a team a fan of my team. So you okay. know, if we play dirty or we if or we don't play well, I'll call our team out for it. Yeah. And I think Claude Giroux is a really talented guy. Yeah, I don't and like I, Sidney Crosby at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's he's coming for that Con Smith. Con Smith. Yeah. I'm sure no, he is. got the Rocket Richard. That's what he got. That's, <laughs> that's my. It's my like bad. you're speaking Chinese. Yeah, right? It's just hockey. We're already on a round two. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But good you're luck good. next season. Oh, thank you. Is Mason okay? No, it wasn't Mason. Oh, Who? the other goalie? Yeah, he's yeah. okay. He's just he's recovering. Okay, okay. okay. Devin Drew and everybody! Yeah. Yeah. Sports, sports, sports. Why am I crying from, <laughs> clapping, from <laughs> clapping for myself? <laughs>